So this little girl, this is Acacia, um, found out is, so she's the one that was born out in the pens. Total surprise. Didn't know her mom was getting ready to have a baby and found her and it was about, I think it was about 10 degrees. Yeah, hi. She, it uh, seems like it's probably going to lose the tips of her ears. So they've gotten all hard and kind of crispy. So she must have gotten frostbit on the end of her ears. No surprise. So that's not really what we want. But I said, oh, are you falling off? We didn't know her mama. I, so her mama was the one that I had noticed. So she wasn't supposed to be bred. But so her mom, I had bought her mom and did not think she was bred because she's pretty young. Hi, girls. Um, but she turns out she was bred, and I had noticed that she bagged up about two days. She barely had a little bit of other development a couple days before this girl was born. So I was watching her, and I noticed, so I saw her mom one morning came out and noticed that her mom was bloody. So we went and looked and found this little girl. And then after that, then Coco's mom, um, then I caught all my young dolings and start putting Coco's mom up at night so to make sure in case she did have a baby which indeed she did but anyway this little girl's gonna she'll end up losing the tips of her ears but well won't hurt her but I sort of again wish I would have had her mom inside if I had known she was gonna have a baby pretty quiet down here this morning Chewing on my coat. What do you say there, Splat? What do you think, huh? And Splat? <laughs> Not quite sure what to make of me, huh? Yeah. Miss Acacia, Miss Coco. Ooh. What are you doing there, Treacle? It's your mama. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> She's panting. Why don't you go in the shade if you're hot, silly thing? Hi, guys! Hi, mister! Hi! Hi, guys! Just chilling with the babies. You like those scratches, huh? What do you think, buddy? She's snoozing. Jocko snoozing. Little Coco's still running around. Whoop! Chilling over here. You just really like that string, huh? Poor Splat. <laughs> Bit much, isn't it, Splat? Are you going to be a pest, Coco? 
Are you gonna be a pest? You are the same color as Birdie, so maybe you're gonna be like Birdie. <laughs> Goodness. You just need to chew on all of my coat. Silly thing. Coco obviously doesn't mind being on somebody's lap. little pest. So we had an incident yesterday with our teenage livestock guardian dog. So who's now wearing what is called a yoke, which these are used on livestock guardian dogs. So a lot of times livestock guardian dogs take a while to um, really get to where they're fully working and sometimes they cause problems. So Zell yesterday got into the main the pen with the sheep and the mama goats and the baby goats and apparently um, was running them pretty hard because they broke the fence in this corner over here and in the far corner over across there they broke the fence so which means that there was enough pressure on the fence to where they popped the fence in a weak spot and I did have one ewe out that was skinned up pretty good and obviously it hit her face on something pretty hard because she had a pretty bad bloody nose um, and she was out in the pasture and um, Jackson was barking so I came down you know saw that something was going on came down and um, got the sheep put away so got the sheep put away and got the fence put back together and some of the goats that had gone into the other pen got them put put back in the right pen and kind of looked over the sheep the sheep were all bunched up over on the other side of the pen which ind you know again indicating that there had been something going on and um i wasn't totally sure what happened but then while i was down here um i think i was putting out hay or doing something and Zell got in here again and started chase running them again and they just all immediately started running which kind of um I think like I said I'm pretty sure what happened and clearly we had an animal hurt and um she was clearly chasing and she knows she's not supposed to she chased the sheep out there when I was trying to catch it and as soon as I yelled at her she stops she she knows she's not supposed to but she gets in here and she takes the inner circle and she can get these animals pretty panicked and running pretty hard. So, um, and she did have her stick on yesterday. So she was getting in the pen anyway with the stick, which isn't unusual. They figure out how to get it lined up the right way. So she now has this yoke on, um, which, you know, it's probably not super comfortable, but it's not hurting her either. And this is a thing that's commonly used with livestock guardian dogs to keep them from getting through fences. But it's she either has to wear this or she's going to have to be on a chain or in a kennel because I can't take the risk that she's going to injure or kill one of any of our animals. And we will hope that she turns it around. She's only eight months old, which is not very old. I mean, she's a puppy, even though she's big she's still a puppy so we're gonna hope that you know we can get this behavior turned around but when I'm not around she's like I said she's either got to have the yoke on or have or be tied up or be in a kennel because I can't have her getting in and hurting or killing animals and um, the yoke is a way that she can be out and about and help Jackson if we did have a mountain lion come through <laughs> Um, so she can still be loose and it but it does keep her from going through the fences so the yoke so far has kept her out of the the pens whereas that stick obviously wasn't working what's going on this is tina oh are we being spooky what's going on tina you guys leaving we have to give um tetanus shots to the ewes probably tomorrow because they're about a month out from lambing so you give the CD and T is the vaccine that's for tetanus and then a couple other forms of clostridium which can cause big problems in the baby so you give it to the moms about four to six weeks prior to them lambing and then the babies are born with antibodies because the babies have to be 
I think it's six, eight weeks old before they can have their vaccine series. Yes, and the sheep are afraid of you. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, it's a little bit of a telltale sign when they don't run from Jackson and they run from you. That tells me a lot. So that's Tina and her ewe lamb from last year, Rowan. He's pretty mellow. And then these are some of these other sheep coming in to see what's going on. That one there's Lucinda, I think. Yep, that's Lucinda. She, I'm a little worried, might have triplets. She's pretty big. She's not bigger than anybody else. That's Rose right there. So Rose is the one that had the bloody nose yesterday and her leg is skinned up on the back. But she didn't get as hurt as bad as Diamond the last time Zell got in there and did that. She, we had a sheep that, <clears throat> she's over there, you can only see her butt, but she um, degloved her leg because she hit something and it actually peeled the skin down on her leg. And she seems to be okay, but she's got a, I mean, it's she's got a big scar from it. and may have problems with it in the future, I hope not. That's Polka. She's got dust and hairy stuff on her. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Goodness. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. Hey girls. That's up. That's up. <laughs> you are going to be a wild thing. Ooh. Goat fight. Did she get you? Mmm, they all run from you. Mm-hmm. Because you're a bad dog. Ooh. Goat fight. You two are so fat. You're like little fat puff balls. Ah, this is Blaze and Oreo. You guys are so fat! Yeah, with your little sticks that keep you in the right pen. You guys have it pretty good, huh? Look at how fat they are. Little fatsies. Woohoo! Miss Bertie and Miss Daisy. Yes. Hello, Tula. Yep, it's feeding time. We know it's so dusty in here, you get your eyes get icky, huh? It's feeding time, everybody's getting antsy. Hi, hi Shawnee. This is Layla, Bruja, Sean, little Violet, Claudia, Lily. So I've just been working on this pen where Miss Ephedra is. I have to hopefully get it dried out some. It's pretty, a lot of manure, but ephedra is due in a week. So she's going in here at night by herself so she can have more, um, a better access to the food. So she's got a little house, which I cleaned out a little bit, but I'm gonna, I'll put more straw in there before she kids. So she has a lot of clean straw. 
So this is, we haven't, well, they've gone back in now, but these guys are coming out, which is not the best thing in the world because I do not trust her. But yeah, I wish they would stay in there with their mamas. But they were just all out here running around and went over there by the box. And I wish they would not do that because here they come out again. And Jax will put them back. See, here she goes. Oh, you guys. Yeah. But I do not trust her not to hurt one. This is the first, well, it's not the first time, but it's one of the only times they've come out here. So this is not so good. And then mamas can't do anything about it. Because they're, they can't get to them. Kind of got babies getting in on the grain. They really haven't been a whole lot. And this one right there is choking a little bit. So I'm going to slow down some. Mama's getting their grain. Yes, hello. Hello, Jacko. I got my glove. Yeah, and eyes. These are the three boys here. Splats. Oh, no, wait, this is my boy. Splats, two boys. You guys slow it down a little bit. Don't get, yeah, don't choke. It's my wrist. It's choking. You're not having any, Acacia? 